uh, as I mentioned, we'll be getting started shortly. If um, if you don't already have so, can you uh, download the Kahoot app on your phone? We have a couple of uh, we have a couple of session or a couple of different Kahoot um, uh, games that we uh, or exercises that we're going to be doing uh, during this session just to test the um, material. They're a little bit more interesting than just listening to me the whole time. So uh, just download the app. Uh, it's called Kahoot. If you don't have it or if you don't know about it, um, it should be available for iPhone, for Android. Um, so please go ahead and download that app uh, before we get started tonight. We're going to be talking about Linux essentials and doing um, going through some of the command line basics, uh, along with background on files and file permissions. Exciting stuff tonight, everybody. Fasten your seatbelts. All right, it's seven o'clock. I'm going to give uh, others just a couple more minutes to join. Uh, just to remind you um, again, if you didn't hear me already, to download the Kahoot app so you can participate in the uh, uh, questionnaires. We have a couple of questionnaires going to um, test your, your skills and your knowledge. And also tonight's um, lesson or, or class or session is being uh, live streamed on YouTube Live. So um, just want to make you aware of that, that uh, it will be on YouTube Live. Give everybody another minute or so to join. Looks like we have about 22 people, maybe a couple more minutes. How is everybody doing tonight? Hope you're doing well. Last time we didn't have a lot of um, questions, but uh, I certainly invite you to, um, during the session. If you have any questions or need any clarification, just unmute your phone and ask. Don't be shy. All right, why don't we uh, go ahead and get started. Um, for those of you who don't know me or haven't uh, had the pleasure of teaching you before, my name is Altez Banji. Um, my back background is in uh, AWS, Amazon Web Services, and Linux. And this is session two of a three-session boot camp on Linux essentials. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about some command line basics, uh, as well as file permissions um, and getting help in Linux. And we have a couple, couple of Kahoot games that we're gonna be playing. So uh, just get that uh, app downloaded on your phone before we hit that first Kahoot game, which is coming up in just a couple of minutes. All right, just to go through today's um, uh, schedule, We'll do uh, a Kahoot uh, plus do most of the session today is going to be a hands-on. There are uh, there are slides. There are quite a few slides that I'm going to go through, but they're going to be uh, complemented and supplemented by hands-on activities. So um, uh, we'll be doing that. Last time uh, or the last session, I talked about the Windows subsystem for Linux WSL, which you can download uh, through the Windows. Uh, or sorry, through the Microsoft Store. So if you've got a Windows machine and you want to uh, participate, which is gonna be a lot more fun than just watching, then just go to the Microsoft Store, uh, download any one of the um, uh, Linux subsystems. You can, I recommend Ubuntu, it's the easiest to get started with. It's the one I'm gonna be using, but just download it. It'll take just a couple of minutes and you can participate as well as watch. And we'll take a short break at 7.45, come back at eight o'clock. We'll continue with more hands-on uh, demonstration as well as a few slides. Take another break at 8.45 um, and then from nine to 9.45, more fun hands-on. So this is an exciting session. Like I said, fasten your seat bells. Um, don't want anybody to lose their grip on tonight's exciting session. All right, so we're going to start tonight with a recap. We'll just go quickly over what we talked about during the last uh, session on Linux. Some of you may have forgotten everything we talked about. So just to refresh your memory, um, we'll go back through some of the basic shell commands that we covered in the last session. I know the last session we ran up out of time at the end, but we will um, go back through those, cover those again, uh, as well as um, uh, look at a variety of new shell commands. And again, all of that will be complemented by uh, some hands-on demonstrations. 
excuse me, we'll talk about uh, how you can use help and get help in uh, Linux. So if you're stuck, you don't know what to do, you don't have an instructor online, how do you actually use Linux to get help? Uh, so there's a few different ways to do that. And we will cover that um, in some detail. And then finally, we'll talk about files and directories. Again, most of you are probably more familiar with um, Windows or Mac OS when it comes to you know compute devices. And as you know, you know those are also stored. Uh, all your files are stored in directories, so it's very similar um, in Linux and in most operating systems. And we'll talk about um, permissions and how to uh, change permissions and how to read permissions and things like that and talk about how files are stored. So we'll do that. So those are four items for uh, that were the four items we'll be covering tonight. And um, to start off with the first item, the, the recap um, of what we talked about last time. So we started with the evolution of Linux and we talked about the fact that it really was born from the desire to keep software as open source, as free to make it available to as many people as possible, to make the source code available to people. And because of that, um, it's really gained a lot of popularity. And because um, it was open source and free, a lot of people have um, chosen to, to take that source code and make variations or different distributions of Linux. And to date, there are over a hundred distributions of Linux. And so we extended that conversation to talk uh, generally about open source and different, different kinds of open source applications, uh, licensing, um, and the fact that even though these things, uh, these open source projects and code are free, they do come with uh, some terms and conditions which are outlined in the licenses. We talked about what is shell, um, and we'll be talking more about what is shell today. We'll, uh, uh, go back, go back over what the shell is, um, and we'll start. Um, and so we did that last time, and then we did some introduction to to shell commands, um, and that's where we ended last time. And I know we ran out of time, so we'll continue with some of that today. Okay. All right. So um, as I mentioned, there's the Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, this is going to make um, this session and the next session a lot more interesting for you. So I would suggest if you don't already have it to do so, um, you can download this Ubuntu um, uh, WSL 20.04 or 18.04, it doesn't really matter. It's just to give you a little bit of practice and, and give you some um, you know, hands-on experience rather than, than just watching me do all of the work. All right, and it's free. There's no charge to download that. So give it a shot. It's not gonna hurt your computer. It kind of sits in the back um, and attaches to what you already have. Does anybody have any questions about the Windows subsystem for Linux? Has anybody tried downloading it and had any problems? No? All right. All right, well, give it a shot. I encourage you to try that. All right, and um, so here we go, our first uh, Kahoot. So I'm going to click on this link, which is going to give me the Kahoot. So if you can all, uh, all of you that have, have downloaded Kahoot, um, just start it and there will be a bunch of questions. I think there's seven questions here. Fairly simple questions, but just to test some of the, the work we did um, in the last session. So if you open up your, your um, Kahoot app at the bottom, it'll say play. Just gonna check here so I can give you the right instructions. So it'll say play or enter pin. And then the pin you wanna enter is 6482500. All right, we have our first player, Sarah. Thank you for joining. Excellent, four of you are on so far. Very nice, good stuff. See if I can share the music here. All right, there we go. All right, so we have 11 of you and 31 on the call. So I'll give the rest of you a few more minutes to join. This is a lot of fun.
Excuse me, I have a question. Yes. Um, the one that I found says um, for quizzes, is that the correct one? That is the one. Kahoot. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we have lucky 13, 14, keep them coming. Okay, let us get started here. If you haven't joined, then, you know, as soon as you join, you can uh, start playing. All right. Oh, where's my start button? What is Linux? Software, hardware, both don't know. I have a question. Yes. I can see the word, it's just a symbol and the colors on my screen, my font. Do I yes, just you choose have, this? You, you, you look at the words here on the screen. Oh, okay. And choose it on thank your you. phone. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. All right. Excellent. So uh, eight of you got um, that question right. So Linux, based on our last conversation, is uh, an operating system. It's essentially software that runs on top of the hardware. So it doesn't include the hardware. It sits on top of the hardware. It is an operating system. Very good. Most of you got that. All right. Let's keep going. Let's look at our leaderboard here. Colonel five, followed by Yassine and Shanice. Very good, let's keep going. Question two, what is open source software? Wow, excellent, very good. So software where the code is available, that's exactly right. Um, and on top of that, it's available for free, wonderful. All right, let's look at the leaderboard, Shanice, Yassine, and Sonar. Top, top three, which operating system is a distribution of Linux? Fabulous. Yes, we talked about this last time. So Android is um, a form of embedded Linux. Very good. All right. Yassine, Mir, and Mehmet. Good stuff. Question four. Which is the most powerful account on Linux? It can access any file or program. Root, that is correct. So root is the most powerful um, account. Uh, administrator, uh, that's more of a Windows thing. And the owner is an owner of a, a file and power user is not so much a thing. So uh, root is correct. Mehmet, Yassine and Shanice, good stuff. Let's keep going. We're halfway through question five. Which command lists all directory contents, including hidden files and directories? Okay, we, oh, okay, maybe that this one didn't come through. So we'll talk about that again today. To get hidden files, you need the dash A on LS. LS dash L, which most of you chose, is going to give you the detailed view of uh, the directory. All right. All right, Shanice taking over the top spot, Mammoth and Yassine close behind. 
What is the symbol for the home directory in Linux? Home directory. Awesome, good stuff. Yeah, it's the tilde, the one right uh, beside the one with a shift. So most of you got that, excellent. Looks like Shanice is on fire, Mammoth and kernel number five. Question seven, what does the Linux command CD do? CD in Linux. Excellent. Most of you got that one. CD means uh, change directory, change the current directory. Good stuff. Okay, looks like Shanice still on fire, followed by Mammoth and Kernel 5. Question eight, three more to go. Which Linux command is used to create a folder? How do you create a folder? Or a directory. How do you create a folder or directory? Fantastic. Make mkdir or make directory. Excellent. Most of you got that one. Good stuff. And we have Shanice, Mammoth, and Colonel Five with Yasin on fire in fourth place. Question nine, we're almost there. Which Linux command is used to match any single character? Single character. We covered this towards the end last week. All right, this one was split. Uh, question mark is correct. A lot of you chose brackets. So brackets gives you, and we'll cover this tour in the beginning again. The brackets cover uh, specifies a range. If you want to spe uh, specify a range, use those square brackets. Uh, dollar sign and caret are for beginning and end, and we'll cover those as well. All right, so as we head into the last question, Shanice, Mammoth, and Colonel Five, let's see how it goes. Question number 10, it's a true or false? The mo sorry, most of the common Linux file system are not case sensitive. Okay, half and half. I don't know if the question's a little bit confusing, but um, it's false because it is case sensitive, very case sensitive. All right, let's see how we're doing here. In third place, Mammoth, eight out of 10 with 6,900 points, eight out of 10 for Colonel Five, and nine out of 10 questions with 8,426 points. Congratulations to, Sine uh, to Shanice. And Yasin and Sehon, I hope I said your name right, uh, have honorable mentions. Good stuff, everybody. I think uh, for the most part, um, you remembered a lot of stuff that we covered last week, uh, or you did a lot of good guessing, whichever it was, good stuff. All right, so um, let's move on. So we're gonna cover in, in the next uh, 20, 25 minutes or so, we're gonna do uh, go back and, and do a little bit of uh, um, repeat and cover some of the basic commands we did last week. But again, I just want to make sure as we're going forward, everybody's on the same page and, you know, it never hurts to do a little bit of a refresher. All right. So just again, uh, let's talk about what uh, what is the shell. So the shell is uh, essentially the primary interface on uh, Linux systems that's used to program or sorry to process commands. Um, the, the most common shell that's used is called bash, B-A-S-H. And it stands for born again shell uh, and born is the name of the person who created the original shell. 
Um, and that's the, like I said, the most common shell that you're going to see on most Linux systems. It serves dual purposes. We talked about that last week. Um, it's an interpreter, meaning you can on the command line type something and it will go and process it and come back. But it's also a programming language. You can write a script uh, with bash commands and have it do something more elaborate. Um, the prompt uh, usually includes the user, host, and directory, and you can customize it. And we'll spend a little bit of time just having some fun uh, customizing the prompt and um, uh, show you how to do that. And you can also, in the prompt, see the user info. So if you see a dollar sign at the end of the um, prompt, it typically means it's not the root user. And when you see the hash, uh, it signifies that it is the root user. And then in terms of what happens is as soon as you send um, a command through the shell, uh, it's sent to the interpreter for parsing and then executing, par ex sorry, parsing and then execution. And by parsing, that means um, going through the command or commands that you wrote, um, uh, interpreting the syntax, the way in which things are written, um, the various parameters that are sent to it, and then um, it executes it, uh, sends it to the kernel and executes it. So we, the simple prompt looks like this, uh, user, uh, the username, uh, the host name, um, the current directory, and then the type of user, okay? But um, I thought we'd have a little bit of fun here this evening and show you how to modify the command prompt. So hopefully you can all see my, um, my system here and I'm gonna be moving it out around a little bit so everything is visible at the same time. But uh, let me just start with this. So if I wanna, uh, I'm gonna make it a bit bigger so you can see it better. Okay. But if I want to um, see what my prompt is, there's a variable called PS1. If I do echo PS1, that's what my prompt is right now. So that probably looks like Greek to most of you or some other language that you don't understand but let me simplify it for you. So the easiest way to, well, so I've, the first thing you wanna do when you change your prompt is back it up. So just set it to some other variable. So PS1, let's say um, old, I'm just gonna set it to PS1. Okay, now if I echo uh, PS1 old, and you remember echo means, um, uh, put a, uh, send the output to the screen. You can see I've got it saved. So if I need to restore it, I can. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. But I can simply set PS1. Um, I'm gonna use the, the, the or I'm gonna, back to, you don't need to do this, but if you can, you can just say PS1, that's the variable, and we're gonna set it to something. I'm just gonna set it to two chevrons. Okay, it's as simple as that. Well, hello is not gonna do anything. Um, echo, hello. So I can just type whatever commands, but my, you can see my prompt is different. So that it's as simple as, as that if you wanted to do it that way. But you can also um, make it colorful. So here's the kind of basic syntax to make it colorful. All right, it's slash E with a square bracket. Then it's X, Y and X, Y, you pick your color. This is the color table followed by M. And then you can put in whatever you want to be in that color. And that could be free text, could be your username, host name, the current time, the directory, um, and then the, the user type. And then there's, you just end it with a slash E bracket M. Now, I didn't make this up. Um, I'm just delivering the, the bad news to you that it's a little bit complicated, um, but this is how you do it. Okay, so let's just copy this. I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste it. I have to say PS1 equals. Now, one thing you have to remember when you assign these variables, you can't leave a space. If I do this between the equal sign, it'll give me a, an error. Okay, command not found you have to make sure there's no space after the equal signs on either side. So let's pick a color. Uh, let's pick purple, so 035. 
So I'm just going to set it to 0 and 35. And then what do I want? I'm just going to put, um, I'm just going to put the word high. Did I make a mistake here? Let me do this just to test it out. Oh, sorry. My bad. I forgot the quotation marks. Okay. So you see it, the 035 is purple. And then the dash u or the slash u gives me the user. But I'm going to go back to what I originally was trying to do. Let's just say hi. So you don't have to put in anything fancy. I can do hi. I can put a space at the end of it. I can say hi slash u. Okay, so you can customize it like that. So I've, I've added. Um, uh, color with a prompt. Now let's say I want to do uh, another color with something in addition. So I'm going to say, let's say I want to put in, uh, now I want to put it in, um, say brown, 033. I'm going to copy this again. Th th you just have to keep repeating this. So I'm just going to copy this. Okay. And what did I say? Um, I said brown 033. So I'm going to do 033. And my element this time, so you see, I, I can pick use, I picked already a user, but there's different variables that you can use. Okay, you can put in free text, which I showed you. I typed hi. You can put the username, you can put the host name. Let's say I want to always know what time it is because I don't want to be late for dinner. So I always want the time in my prompt. So that's how I get the time slash at. Okay. Um, and okay, slash at. And I'm going to say it is. Let's see what this prompt looks like. Okay. And it looks like I've got something fishy going on here. Okay, anyways, it doesn't matter. I don't want to waste too much time, but I've got, basically you can see I've got um, hi and then slash u gives me my name. And then I switch the color here to brown. And then I put in another prompt. It is um, the time and then I end the prompt. So what I can also do is, um, Oh, I think it's this. Oh no. What I can also do is I can put in this thing here. You remember if I want to see if I'm the root user or not, put in this backslash dollar. So I can put in a backslash dollar. Right. So that will tell me if I'm the root user or not. Oh, I know what the problem is. It's over here. I forgot the slash, I think. Okay, there we go. So you can have some fun with this. You can customize it, make it your own. Um, you know, you're not stuck with what you're given, but you know, that's the prompt variable PS1 and you can change it to, to whatever you want it to be. And then, you know, you're running your, your commands, um, but it's always, you know, the prompt is, is what you changed it to. Okay. So that's the prompt um, and the way you can change it and the various uh, parameters that are available to you. Okay, so this was one of the questions on the Kahoot and something we covered uh, last week, but I just wanted to, to remind you again, uh, because I think half of you got this one right and half of you got it um, wrong, but uh, Linux is case sensitive. So I think we did this example. Um, let's just make a directory. 
session two, uh, there should be nothing, uh, change to session two, there should be nothing here. So I'm gonna do touch my file.txt and I'm gonna do touch my file.txt and I'm gonna do touch my file.txt. And you remember the, the command touch just creates a zero byte file, okay? So you might think, oh, it's the same file. There's only one file that's gonna be there. Nope, three files. These are all different files, okay? So you have to be, you know, the Linux is case sensitive. Um, and so you have to, to keep that in mind when you are uh, typing commands, when you're searching for files, um, anything like that. All right, uh, and I'm not gonna go into presentation more because I'm gonna be switching between the presentation and the, um, the uh, command line. So I'm, I'm gonna just keep it like this. So let's talk about some of the bash commands for directories. Again, bash is the born again shell. It's the primary shell for Linux. So this is something maybe you know, but I wanna be, um, just make it explicit, be clear, make sure we're on the same page that in an operating, on an operating system, your files are organized um, into folders using a kind of a, street, a tree structure. So here's a sample tree stru structure. The, the top of the tree um, is slash. And then under that, you have some directories. And then under that, you might have subdirectories and more. And then eventually, you're going to have files under there. So the question is, how do I traverse these directories? And how do I manipulate the directories? And again, most of you, if you're coming from the, the Windows world or the um, Mac world, you're more used to some kind of a user interface. If you're in Windows, you have the uh, Explorer and um, Mac, you also have the, uh, it's called, you have that thing. <laughs> um, um, the, the file, it's a similar file, file explorer, but you can traverse the directories. It's very, it's very visual. You can see it uh, with Linux, um, not so much, you know, unless you have the uh, uh, user interface. Um, uh, one of the distributions that have has a, a Windows type of interface, you're not going to have that capability. So let's uh, just recap here some of these um, commands, right? So if I go back to my home directory, which is this, if that was again, one of the questions. Um, if I just do LS, I'm gonna get just a uh, list of all the um, contents and you can see they're color coded by files, um, by executable files. And we'll talk about these permissions and so on later on. Uh, but these are files, these green ones are executable files. These are directories, the blue ones. So that's if I just do ls, that's the basic list. Uh, if I wanna see all the details, um, I'm gonna do ls minus l. And this is my um, command of choice, but there you can see all the permissions and we're gonna dig deep into the permissions today. Um, the owner group um, that the file belongs, uh, sorry, the owner of the group uh, you've got the size, you've got the last modification date, and then the uh, name of the file. Okay. And then the other question, which was on the Kahoot, was how do I get hidden directories or hidden files? So if you wanna see hidden files, it is just gonna be ls-la, and you can combine these. So if I do ls minus l, I get details, so I can combine the L and the A. So if I do LS minus LA, I get the details, but I also get the hidden files. And what are hidden files? These are hidden files. If you wanna create a hidden file in Linux, you just start it with a dot, okay? Except for these two, which are special uh, items. So the dot dot means what? What does the dot dot mean? Anybody remember from last week? It's the same in Windows, same in Mac. What is dot dot? Uh, previous directory? 
yeah, uh, the directory one one up. So if we look at this, if I'm here, dot dot is here. If I'm here, dot dot is here. Okay. And what is dot? Dot is the current directory. So if I want to reference something in my current directory, which we'll do, then I can just use dot. And there's two ways. So for example, if I want to, you remember we we um, we use the the command cat. So if I want to if I want to look at the contents of that file, I can do cat a dot txt, or I can do cat sorry a dot txt. And I get the same thing. Okay, so dot dot is up and dot is here. Okay, so that's the ls, um, and then the ll is just a an alias that's set up uh, for ls minus la. Just gives you a faster way to do it. You don't have to. So you don't have to type the whole thing out if you're lazy like me. All right, traversing directories. So we talked about, we just talked about this a little bit. Uh, I can change to a particular directory. Um, and in fact, we're gonna be talking about all of these directories in a little while and what they mean. But if I wanna go to a specific directory, I can do just that. Okay, there's nothing in this directory. Um, that would be going to a specific directory. If I want to go up, we talked about that. I would just do dot dot. That would take me um, up one. The root directory, let's look at that one. And so what is in the root directory? So this is everything. This is where, so if I go back again to my image here, that's here. So everything begins at root. Okay, so if you think about, again, Windows, which I'm guessing most of you are familiar with, that's like going to your C C colon backslash, everything um, emanates from there. So in Linux, your root directory is your slash, okay? And then I can go, I can also go home. So all of the home directories, so every user will have, typically every user will have a home directory. So if I just do CD slash home, uh, you can go to your, you can see all the home directories and I can go to, my directory there. Okay. So if I do this again, var, let's just go to some random directory here. So if I wanted to, so if I check the current directory, it tells me I'm in var log. If I want to go home, right, this was again one of the questions on the Kahoot. If I want to go home, I can do cd home like that. Or let me go back. I can do cd uh, tilde. So tilde is your home directory. So if I do that, that will send me back to my home directory. Okay. And there's another actually a useful command. Uh, sometimes you find useful. So let's say you need to go to a particular directory. Um, that's far away and you don't want to have to come back to where you you know retype this directory so let's let's try an example like that let me show you um so let's let me go into cd um conditions cd conditions okay so i'm in this file home conditions right now I want to go to some other directory because I want to check something in that directory, but I don't want to have to go there and then um, come back there, come back here and type all the, uh, um, the entire path out. So what you can do is you can use these commands called push and pop. So if I do push D, okay, so I'm pushing this on, if you guys are familiar with a stack, but think of it pushing it onto a, um, yeah, some kind of a, a stack. So you're going to push it onto the stack um, and I'm going to var log. Is there anything under there? Journal. Okay. So this shows you your stack. 
your directory stack that's there right now. So where am I right now? I'm in var log journal. Oh, but I forgot, where did I come from? I don't want to type out that whole path. So if I just pop my directory stack, it will send me back to where I was before. Okay, so push D and pop D. So if you're trying to go back and forth, uh, you don't remember the past, you don't want to type the past, that's a good way to get around. Okay, so change directory, push, pop, we talked about. Um, and then uh, this, I think most of you got right on the on the Kahoot, but let's look at, um, again, I'm inside a directory. If I want to make a directory, uh, sub dear one, so I've made that. Now uh, let's try multi-level, make dear sub dear one, sub dear two, sub dear three. What will happen? Anybody guess? There's only two options. Either it's going to work or it's not going to work. Yeah. Okay. So I can do this. And then I can do. Okay. So you have to traverse it one at a time. Okay, so MKDIR, MKDIR is for make directory. Okay, and then again, we did this last week um, and we saw the differences between the empty directory and directories that are not empty, right? So if I look in this directory uh, and I put a file here, And I go up one. So now if I try to remove directory sub D3, is it gonna work or no? No, final oh. answer? Yeah, yeah, directory not empty, right? So I have two choices. Either I can go and I can remove that file from inside the sub D3 or I can do the RM, right? RM is for is for files, but if I do dash R and F, it'll force. And if I do that, then it goes away. Right. So again, I can just go. I can do um, if I just want to remove the file, remove sub dir three my file.txt and then I can do remove dear sub dear three and it's good. So you can't delete non-empty folder. So either use the rm minus rf that will recursively delete all of the files in that folder and then it'll remove the folder or you just go in and manually delete it. But sometimes manually deleting it is quite tedious and painful and cumbersome which is why there's the rm minus rf. Okay. All right, PWD is not password. It's the present working directory or to show the current path. So, you know, in my prompt, I haven't set it up like that. So it would probably be better if I did this, uh, right? And I said PS1. E Let's do this, PS1 equals, and then I could put the current directory, which was here, which is the, which is W slash W.
Oh, this is what happens when I try to do things on the fly. Okay. All right. Does anybody know what I'm doing wrong here? It's the same mistake I made before. You got to put quotes around this. Okay. So now you can see the, the current directory here. So if I do PWD, you get, you can see that that's the, the base and then the full direct, which is shown here. And then the full directory is over here. So you can see the full path. Okay. All right. Okay. So perfect timing. That brings us to the first break. Um, the next session we're going to, or the next, sorry, next section, next uh, hour or next 45 minutes, we're going to be talking about uh, specific commands for files and directories and talk about uh, permissions and how to modify those. So uh, we'll break here for 15 minutes and I will see you back at eight o'clock. All right, hopefully everybody had a good short 15 minute break. Let's get started with the second hour of tonight's session. All right, so we were, um, we left off here with, um, uh, we talked about the general commands for uh, directories, traversing directories, um, adding, basically traversing and manipulating directories. So now we're going to um, go to files, um, and then we'll do a little bit of an exercise, and then do a little bit of um, searching um, using wildcards and special cases for, for searching. So this, uh, this command I already showed you last week and we did it again just a few minutes ago. And by the way, I hear some background noise. So if everybody could just please mute, unless you've got a question to ask, I'd appreciate it. Um, but if you wanted to just create a file, um, you would just use this command touch and that would um, create a zero byte file for you. And there are many cases where you might use that, um, especially when you're um, automating. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to mute everybody. Okay, uh, especially when you're automating and you want to test if you can uh, create a file or you want to just put a file there so somebody else can write to it um, or create a file that you can edit later. So it's, um, uh, you know, useful in, in those scenarios. Okay, sorry, I had to mute everybody. I was getting some feedback uh, or some background noise. All right, so um, we used this command earlier for the directories as well as for files, but if you want to uh, remove a, a file, right? and the other thing we talked about is the, the man pages. So if you were to do man, Right, you see the different um, flags that you have. Uh, so you have force that will um, uh, essentially not prompt you and, uh, ex and, and basically ignore any errors. Uh, if you want to be prompted, uh, then you would use the dash I. Okay, so that's interactive. Uh, you can also put it into verbose mode. You can use uh, dash D instead of RMDIR, which is what we used before, you can just use a dash D flag with RM and it has the same effect. And then the, the, the one that we tested or that I showed you was the RM dash R, which is recursively uh, removing folders and directories. So that's a very useful one, but a very dangerous one as well, right? Because if you have a huge folder um, with lots of subdirectories, um, that you want to remove, you know, again, I'm just going to go back to Windows because that's what I think most of you are used to using. If you've, uh, you know, let's say you've unzipped a, a large file uh, and it's created, you know, all these uh, folders and subfolders and um, you're done with it, you don't need to use it anymore. You know, you just right click on it and delete it, remove to recycling, I mean, whatever. But if you do it in Linux, you can't just um, remove that directory. You have to um, recursively 
delete all the files and then remove the uh, and then delete the directory. So it's a little bit more complicated. But once you do that, like I said to you last week, there is no recycling bin. Recycling bin. So once it's gone, it's gone. Um, and so uh, you just need to be careful about that. But that is a common and useful um, switch. All right, um, copy. So if you want to copy files to a, a different location, and again, if we look at the man files for that, okay. So there's essentially the options, which we'll talk about in a second, but essentially you're going to copy the source. You, you type the source name first, and then the destination uh, second. Uh, so some common switches are, um, there's the dash F and the dash I, same as um, what we saw for RM. Um, there's the recursive. So again, if you wanna copy um, an entire directory, um, that would be the way to do it. Um, if you wanna remove the existing uh, destination file, you could do it that way, you can use that. Um, so let's try one of these. Uh, Okay, so let's see conditional statements. Okay, that's got a bit of stuff in it to it, right? Um, so I'm going to copy slash or dash I dash R source first, the conditional statements, and then the destination. Oops, I'm going to copy to temp. That was fast. Let's see what happened. Okay, so you can see if I go into conditional statements here, everything is there. Now let's try the same thing. I'm gonna go back up. Um, I'm going to do the same thing. Copy dash I dash R, the temp. Let's see what happens now. Okay, you see, this is what the dash I flag is doing for me now. The file already exists. So each time now, it's going to ask me if I want to uh, overwrite it. So yes, yes. So again, try again. Yes, but it's not going to work. Permission denied. So you would have to go through this each time. So this is good if you want to be extra careful about something um, because it's going to prompt you each time. But for example, if you are writing a script or you wanted this to be done in an automated fashion, this is the worst way to do it because in fact, it won't even work because it needs somebody in front of the um, terminal. Okay, so that's what the dash I does. And then we can try, um, let's try the verbose. Um, so let's just try copying the same thing. Let's just copy it to um, another directory. Dash R. Okay, so I think we tried something like this last week. Um, but maybe with a different command, but you see with, when you put in the verbose flag here, and this exists for uh, most commands, maybe if not all, but essentially you see everything it's doing. So again, this is useful if you wanna see what it's doing. It might actually also be useful in, um, you know, in, in, in some sort of a scripting fashion, if you wanted to log all of this information, if you wanted to see every step that it was going through. So, you know, that's what all of these flags are for. They're all, used in different scenarios for different purposes, but um, that's what it's for, okay? Uh, copy, so move is going to be similar, except it's going to delete uh, the destination. You're gonna have similar uh, kinds of flags, okay? Cat, um, 
not going to spend a lot of time on this one either. We did this one last week, but essentially um, it's going to show you the contents of the file. That's it. And then um, echo, um, and there's a couple of different ways to do this, but um, right, we did, we talked about this. So if I want to echo hello to uh, my new file.txt, now I do cat my new file.txt, and I get hello, and we're going to try goodbye. We we'll use the double redirect this time. Now, if I cat my new file, I have hello goodbye. So this is going to append, and this is going to um, essentially erase whatever's in the file already. So now you can combine these, right? So I can cat a.txt, and then I'm going to take the output of that and I'm going to redirect it to, to, to my new file.txt. And now if I cat my new file.txt, I've got all three. Okay, so you can basically um, take the output of a file or something that you're uh, outputting the screen and you can output it to another file uh, um, again potentially for logging, potentially for you know a lot of different reasons when you're scripting um, or if you're trying to um, get information off a screen and store it in a file, all uh, useful to do to have. Okay, so let's go through this exercise together. Um, again, if you've got the, the WSL um, installed in your environment, then you can, try it by yourself, otherwise you can watch. So what we, the point, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to recreate this um, folder structure and this file structure. So we're gonna start at the top. We want a folder called Claris Way. And then under that, we want a folder called Lessons. And in the Lessons folder, we want a file called Linux.txt, which contains a file called or sorry, which contains the text, I love Linux. And then in the same folder, we have a file called HTML text.txt that has a, the text, I can create a website. And then at the same level, we're gonna have a folder called materials. And under that, a folder called pre-class. And in pre-class, we're going to just have a empty file called lms.txt. And then we are going to have a post-class called try.txt. Okay, so let's let's go through this and try and um, let me see if I can split screen here. It's okay for you guys to see everything. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm in my home directory, right? PWD, my home directory. So the first thing I want to do is create this file, try it.txt, correct? Because this is right at the bottom. So it's easiest to create this file first, correct? That's where I want to start. Anybody? Yes, no, maybe? I think we'll have to create the Claris with folder first. Sorry? Uh, the first word, first folder, Claris, uh -huh. and then we go below. Yes, correct. We don't want to start at the bottom. That's not the right thing to do. So we're going to go top down, we're gonna start at the top. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to uh, create the directory. And the command for creating directory is mkdir. And I'm going to create this directory called Clarisway. Okay. Um, and then under Clarisway, I have two more directories. So I'm gonna um, create those two directories. One is called lessons and one is called materials. So there's a couple ways I can do this, right? So I'm still in the home directory. I haven't gone into my uh, Clarisway directory. So I can do the first one from here just to show you that Clarisway. And again, remember, you don't have to type 
you don't have to type everything completely. Save yourself some time and use the tab. So I just, oops. So I just do MKDIR. I just do CL tab and I get the rest of the characters. So um, yeah, don't waste your time typing um, more than you have to in Linux. So now I'm going to create a directory, make a directory called lessons. So I can do that. Okay. The other thing, the other the alternative way to do it is to first change into the that directory. So cd clarisway. And I can see I've already got the lessons. So I'm going to just in this directory now I can just do mkdir and and I can make this directory called materials. So now you can see we've got the lessons directory and the materials directory. Okay, that's those are the two we want. So let's go down the left branch here. So um, again, two ways to create the file linux.txt. Um, can someone suggest to me what's the first word I want to type here? There's a couple. Well, there's probably four different combinations of things I can do to create those two files. So someone suggest to me how I might start here. I'm in this folder. I'm up here in Clarisway. So tell me what I should do next. Uh, you can either go CD and into lessons. Okay, let's do that. All right, anybody other than Shanice know the answer? What, what can I do next? Anybody? If you don't participate, you might just fall asleep and that would be the worst thing. Can you imagine falling asleep at eight o'clock? That's awful. Somebody tell me what I should do here. Imperial Linux Uh, Sorry? I think you had it right, but I just, you were just a little bit muffled. What did you say? MKDR Linux.txt. Okay, so that's so we're trying to create a file. MKDIR is going to create a directory. Touch Linux.txt. Hmm? Touch, touch. Yes, I can do. Linux.txt. Yes, I can do touch Linux.txt. And then in order to get that line in there, I'm going to echo, um, I love Linux. And, oh, this is just wrapping over because my, my windows too. I'm gonna echo, I love Linux, and I'm going to just redirect it to um, linux.txt. So if I look at it now, in my lessons file, in my lessons folder, I have something called linux.txt, right? And here's lessons, I have linux.txt, and what does it have in there? Well, I just cat it. I love Linux. Okay, good so far. Okay, so then there's html.txt, I can create a website. So I could touch the file. The other thing is you can just echo it straight, right? Echo. I can create a website and I'm going to redirect it to html.txt. Okay, again, now I see I have two files. So I cat that file, html.txt. Okay. All right, good. So we're down, we're down with the left side of the, the branch here. Uh, or left side of the tree here, we're gonna to go to the right side of the tree. So again, you don't have to be in a directory to manipulate that directory. I am here. If I want to, sorry? So why you not use touch command before the html.txt? Uh, you don't have to. You can, the touch, if I touch the file, it would just create a zero byte file. But if I echo it, it will, automatically just create the file. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's a good good question and a good point. You don't have to touch the file before you create it like this. Yeah. 
All right, so now I want to create this materials. Uh, no, we've already created this materials folder. Um, I want to create the pre-class folder, right? So I could hop back up and hop down. That's one way to do it, but let's just do it from here, just for a little bit of a little bit of a challenge. So I want to make this under materials. So I'm going to make dear um, I want to go up one. That'll take me to lessons. Then I want to go down to materials, right? So I'm going to make a directory that starts at materials and then it's called pre-class, pre-class, okay? So you see, I was able to just use this, uh, this traversal to create a directory without having to be in this directory or having to be th in this directory. I can be anywhere. As long as you can specify the path, you can do it. Now it's not, might not always be the most convenient thing to do or the safest thing to do, but sometimes it's easier so you don't have to, you know, go up so many times or, you know, and then have to come down and so on. All right, so I'm going to actually go to that folder now, pre-class. Okay, so I'm going to CD, I'm gonna go up one, then I'm gonna go down to materials and I'm gonna to go to pre-class. Okay, so I'm here now. So now I just want two files, or sorry, I just want one file called lms.txt. So in this case, um, yeah, the best approach is to just uh, touch the file because I don't need anything in it. And I can then go up. And then I want to do a post class. And then I could do the same thing from here. I can just touch post class and try it.txt. Try it. .txt. Okay. Um, so now we've got everything. Yeah, so if we wanted to check it, we could use that. So if I go, if I go up, so now my, I'm at the top level here, Claris way, I'm inside this folder. I'm gonna go up one more. LS minus R, Claris way. Okay, so I'm saying, do a recursive directory list for the folder Clarisway. So basically I can see that entire structure here, Clarisway, the two folders, lessons and materials. Then under lessons, I have html.txt and linux.txt. Under materials, I have these two folders or directories under this directory of that file, under this directory of that file. Okay. You wanted the detailed view, you could also do that. You get all the details. Okay. All right, good stuff. Okay, globbing. So some of this we did last week, but there's a good amount of new stuff here. So let's just go through it. So we can get to Can the, I ask a question, please? You absolutely can ask a question, yes. Uh, now, supposing if uh, I am in the pre-class and I created a post-class in, in it, instead of creating a post-class under materials, if I created a post-class by mistake in the pre-class, uh, other than removing and creating it again, 
like how we copy paste or we move it. So I'll have to use the move MV to the previous thing, right? I'll have to use the move post class from pre class to materials. Yeah. So let's 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 do that. Okay. So let's say um, instead of instead of um, let's say instead we want to move this post class to go under lessons. Okay, so yes. by accident, we created it here. And now what we're saying is we actually want it to be here under this lessons. Okay, so, and that's post-class. So we're, we're here in materials. So we can do it from here. So we can do MV slash R, you type in the source post-class, and then the destination is going to be, there's lots of ways to specify it. I can go, I'm here now in materials, so I can go up one and then to lessons. Okay, just do that. Uh, is it dash R? Oh. Oh, actually, I don't need a recursive for move. Sorry. Um, move post class to lessons. Yeah, it'll just move it. I don't need a recursive. So now, if I look at it, uh, post class is here now. So you could move it uh, if you needed to, or you could copy it. And if you use the copy, then yeah, you need the minus R. If you move it, you don't need it. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so globbing, we did, like I said, some of this last week, and um, there's a f some new stuff here, which is uh, interesting. So let's go through some of this stuff. Uh, let me do a split screen, let's see if it works. I hide this. Yeah, I don't know how to hide this. Okay. Um, all right. So there's the so globbing is essentially um, you know kind of the term to to search or to use to use um, uh, to search using patterns. So if I just go back, uh, let's go back to my home directory. Okay. So first is the question mark, right? So if 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 I um, use a question mark, then it's going to essentially replace it with one, exactly one character. So for example, if I do ls d e a d question mark dot s h Okay, that will show me all the files that start with DEAD and then have exactly one question, uh, exactly one character, and then .sh. So not zero characters, not two characters, because you can see this file didn't show up. Okay, so it's not zero and it's not two, it's exactly one character. Okay. Um, if I use the asterisk though, that's like a wild card. I'm sure most of you are familiar with that. Um, that will give me as many characters as I want. So I can do LS, um, let's say D star. And that gives me everything that starts with D. Right? Or I do LL T star. Uh, so actually the LL is better. So if I do, so first it's giving me all of the files that start with T, star. 
But then I've also got a directory called temp, which, start, which starts with T. So that's equivalent to me saying LLTMP. So it's basically listing the, direct, the contents of that directory. If I just want files, the list of files and no directories, then I have to specify, um, it has to look like this. Now I have to do LLT star dot star. That's saying that I want everything with that starts with T and then any number of characters and then a dot and then any number of characters. So in that case, temp doesn't have a dot anywhere. So it's not going to be matched by this, sorry, by this pattern here. Um, and then the other powerful thing are the square brackets. So if I do, um, let's say, list all the files that go from A, A to Z and A to Z, again, it's um, case sensitive, and then EAD star. All right, so this is giving me everything that starts with one character. That's any character between A and Z or A and Z, followed by the three characters EAD, followed by any number of characters. Okay, so this is exactly one character, but in this range. And here's the difference. Here's the difference between the, the just to give you an example. If I did this, that only gives me that one file, right? Still looking for one character, but only between A and B. Whereas if I did this one character, then it would give me any character. Here I specify only between A and B, one character, but it has to be between A and B. And here I specify it's one character, but it can be any character. Okay, so it really depends on what kinds of things you're searching for and what you're using it for. So let's go into some of you may have heard of this. Uh, let's go to the next slide here. Some of you may have heard about this command um, grep. Okay, and I'm not going to go into details. Too, too many details about graph, except to say that it's um, it searches in a file. So let's do an easy example here. Let me just check my um, file. Cat a .txt. Okay, so I have here. This file, it's called my new file.txt. Okay. Um, so I'm going to search for something in it. So the simplest thing I can do, if, or not the simplest thing, one of the things I can do is based on what we talked about before, I'm going to uh, grep and then I want to type the pattern I'm looking for. So basically I'm asking it to highlight anything that has an H that starts with an H and has more characters and it does that. Okay. Or I can do grep for hello, my new file.txt and it basically outputs wherever it finds hello. Right, so if I just do this, I just added one more line there. Hello again. Okay, so I got hello, goodbye, old file, and hello again. So now I'm going to grab for hello, 
gonna, means I'm searching for the word hello, grep hello, in the file, my new file. And now you see it comes up twice. Okay, so that's just a brief introduction to grep. But really why I wanted to show you that so we can use some of these other globbing characters. So I have a file here called list. Okay, which is the same as what you see here. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're going to do this. Oops. So what if you, I don't know if you can see this, but this carrot, it's the shift uh, six on your keyboard. So if I do shift six of so single quotes, sh shift six, the carrot, and then P and R, uh, then P and R. So we all know what this means. So in the square bracket means what? Exactly one character and it must fall between P and R. But what this is saying, in addition to that, the caret means it has to be at the start of the line. So it can't be a P anywhere in the middle or at the end or anywhere else, or a Q or an R. It has to be at the beginning. Okay, so if I do that, it gives me pair. Okay, similarly, if I do this, I'm looking for something that starts with. So basically I'm saying it starts with A, B, or C capital. And it comes back with apple or banana and banana. Okay. And then the if you, that's at the beginning of the, the string. If I want to find something at the end of the string, then I use dollar sign. So what I'm saying is that the last character has to be an A. Okay, that means A end of line. Okay, and yeah, that's what I get, banana. Okay, or I can do in this case, I'm going to look for 50 at the end of a line. So where's 50? It should only come up with this thing. Okay, so you can search at the beginning of the, li uh, of the line, the end of the line. Um, you can search for, you know, wild cards. So let's, and then the other thing is this pipe. So pipe means send the output of one thing to the next thing. So I can type multiple commands. So for example, I can pipe, I can, let me just do this example that I created here. Let's explain it. Okay, so first what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab let me just type it by, uh, by hand. I'm going to grep for something that starts with a character between A and C, A, B, or C from the file list.txt. So that's the output of that. So if I want to then do something else with that output, okay, now I'm going to pipe it, means I'm going to send it to this next command. Let me expand it here because it's wrapping around. So I'm going to send it to the next command and I'm going to grep um, for something that starts with B. So here I don't have to provide a file name because I'm just taking the output of this and I'm putting it into this command here. So that's what this pipe is for. So all of these, um, all of these different maximize this. All of these different um, commands here, or these characters, are helpful when you're searching. So you could be searching in a file, 
you could be searching a directory, you could be, you know, using it for LS, you could be, or, you know, listing a directory, you could be searching files. Um, so very powerful. And, you know, it takes a little bit of getting used to, um, but it's quite powerful and helpful when you're looking for um, stuff in a file. Okay. All right. Um, okay, why don't we pay a little bit of Kahoot um, before our break. We're a little bit behind, but that's okay. How far behind are we? We're not too bad. Let's do this Kahoot. So if you wanna um, get your phones out again. Just to kind of recap our learning on all of these commands. Okay, so again, start up your Kahoot app and then in the middle, the bottom, it says enter a pin and we're gonna get the pin now. And your pin is 505 505-4976. 30 people on the call, so let's try and get at least half of you 15. Only seven, nobody else wants to play. Anybody having trouble? Need some help getting on? I'll give you another minute and then we'll start. All right, I'm gonna start the game. Turn off the music. All right, eight questions. What is syntax? So could you mind, please tell me enter pin number, sir? Pin number, yeah, it's right here at the bottom, 505-4976. 505-4976. Okay. okay, so we got five of you got that right. And yeah, I didn't emphasize it a lot, but essentially syntax is the way um, a language is written, um, you know, and it's the same as in any language, even if you're talking about English syntax. Um, how how the language is constructed, how a, a sentence is constructed, um, a line is constructed. Okay, good. Most of you got it though. Five out of five out of seven. Good. All right. Um, Shanice, Colonel, and Mir. Good stuff. Second question. Oh, repeat. It looks like. All right, excellent. Uh, most of you got that. Root is the most powerful user. We have Shanice, Mir, and Colonel. Which command lists directory contents with details?
Correct. LS minus L is with details. That's the column view kind of. And then LS minus A, remember, is for hidden files. Details, hidden files. And if you put them together, you get details and hidden files. Good stuff. All right, Colonel's on fire of Shanice, Colonel, and Pascal. What does CD do? Excellent, changes the directory, very good. All right, leaderboard stays the same. Question five, what is the symbol for the home directory? Is this a different one or did I put, give you the same one? Okay, good, Tilda. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a different one. There's only eight questions here. Most of you got it. Shanice, Colonel, and Pascal. Question six, how do you create a folder? Excellent, MKDIR. How do you delete a folder? Um, yeah, I will give you guys, if you chose RM, I will give that to you because you can do it with the dash D, but, um, yeah, this is the actual command to remove a, to delete a folder, RMDIR. Okay. And then the last one, last question, true or false? Yeah, it's case sensitive, right? Okay, yeah, I think those questions were similar, but I think most of you got it. We'll find you a more a harder uh, Kahoot next time. So Colonel, Mayor, and at first place, Shanice, very good. Colonel, are you related to Colonel underscore five? Pascal and Mammoth. All right. I think Colonel and Colonel underscore five are related. Okay, folks, uh, let us take a 15 minute break. I went over by a couple of minutes here. So we'll come back at 9.02, all right? 9.02, I'll see you back here. All right. Down to the final stretch here. Let's see, where were we? Okay, um, we did the Kahoot. Break. All right. Um, Going to talk just a little bit more about um, uh, how do you get help in Linux um, if there's nobody online, nobody, no instructor, no class. Um, so a couple of things: um, the man pages, first of all. And again, we looked at this. I think we looked at this last week. I don't remember. Um, 
actually no we we didn't we didn't get here uh so the man pages uh, uh man is a short for manual it's essentially uh native documentation um within unix or unix like operating system of which linux is one and typically whenever you install some kind of software or some package the man page comes along with it and it's set up so that you know all the, the man pages look very similar and you're able to get help in a consistent way so you can get help for any commands if i go back to my um Ubuntu window here. Okay. So we saw, saw this for some commands earlier, but um, essentially, if I want to get help. I'm going to do man and then whatever command I have. Uh, that, sorry, whatever command I'm trying to get help with. So let's do man grep. Okay. And you can see it's quite elaborate in terms of um, what it gives you. And, and the structure is typically tip is going to be the same where you have um, the name. In this case, there's grep, but then there are other uh, variations of it. And then an overview of what uh, what the command is. So in this case, there are three different um, usage patterns where you provide the option and then the patterns in a file or a dash E or a dash F. And then it describes to you what it does. And then it goes through and gives the um, the various, the description of the various options or uh, flags or switches that you can use. So you can see here with grep, uh, it describes for you, it uh, searches for patterns in each file. And then, you know, this pattern here refers to the pattern up here, and this file refers to the file up here. So you can get a sense from here and here how they relate to one another. But again, there's uh, all of these different switches. It shows you how to um, access them. And then to, to scroll through these pages, uh, you can, right now I'm just using the up arrow. So you can scroll using the up arrow or the down arrow if you want to go faster. You can hit the space, um, and that'll take you, you know, page by page. And you can see for grep, there's quite a bit of um, documentation, right? So it's um, and you have to remember when we were talking about uh, Linux and Unix, we're talking, you know, well over 35 years ago, and so you know the the um, these pages are all text based and um, you know, may not be the most obvious way to to find help these days, considering everything that's out there. But it's native to Linux, and you know, it's always going to be there in the same format. Okay, so the first place to to look for are these, or the first place to look for help are these man pages, and you, you simply type man space and then whatever the command is. Okay, and here again, it's just giving you a sense of the, the different sections, the name, the synopsis, and then uh, the description. <clears throat> All right, then the other, uh, the other option are the info pages, which are, um, you know, similar, but I guess richer, you could say. Um, so let's, uh, okay. So you can see the first thing here is you've got um, kind of sections, right? So the next is going to be the introduction. If I go up, I get the directory. So let me go up. Oh. So, you know, here's the directory that's organized uh, based on directories. Where was I? Grep, right? So I've hit the top level directory. So you can see it's kind of set up like a like a book. Let me, let me exit from here and go back. Um, but that would be, if I go up, I get the directory, but then I could do, you know, go to the introduction, invoking, regular expression. So there's different kind of sections I can go into. So if I wanna know about that regular expressions, I just hover over that and press enter. And it describes to you what a regular expression is. 
and then you know you can go deeper into that or i can go up you know back to where i was so it gives you a you know kind of a more structured way to navigate things and there's going to be you know more information it's going to be more detailed so if you want to you know there's the index so you know here's all the all of the details so again it's a it's another alternative that's um that's available to you and a little bit more richer and, and more detailed and organized um hierarchical compared to the man pages but um you know it's there if you want to use it And then here's a sample of the echo. I mean, we just saw grep, which is a lot, a lot more elaborative, more elaborate. And you can see some of the details here. And then my favorite, <laughs> although it's not um, it's not within Linux itself, it's Google, right? So I mean, if we do the same thing, um, you know, search for the last character is in graph, right? And you get all kinds of um, very specific answers. I mean, obviously, I don't need to, to teach how to use Google, but you know, um, compared to Man and Info, obviously, those are good to know about because they're native. But these days, you get so, so you can get such specific information in using google um that it seems it's it's a faster way to uh get to the information that you're looking for okay so yeah don't forget you know that's a resource for you uh in addition to to the man and info pages okay let's um let's go to the last uh broad topic for today and that's files and directories. So we're going to talk about um, the file structure in Linux. There is actually a um, a common file structure, so we'll talk about what that is. You've seen me navigate to some of those file those uh, folders, and um, these are it's kind of a, a standard structure in Linux. And so you know we'll talk about what some of those uh, uh, directories are, what they're for, and then we'll get into um talking about uh file permissions and um you know how to set those how to read those and what all of those mean so there's something called uh fhs fhs stands for file system hierarchy standard fhs file system hierarchy standard so this defines the files or the the um yeah, the file system the directory structure for uh the file systems on Linux, um, everything, like I said to you before, falls under root, so under the slash. And in some cases, you'll see that you even have these different um, uh, mount points or these different devices that are attached. You know, it could be a remote, uh, like a disk, like a network uh, attached disk, uh, uh, network storage. And you know those are those are all they all show up as as files as part of the file system under root. So you can always start at root and be able to access devices, uh, information about the system, you know, then then traditional files. But everything starts at uh, at the root. And you know, although we could say for for uh, Unix in general, these these file this file system generally holds true. This is really, uh, if, if you talk about it more strictly, um, uh, is for Linux uh, and not Unix in general. Although you're going to see the same uh, same kind of patterns. So let's talk about some of these um, files and, or sorry, some of the directories and what kinds of files are going to be in them. And I've tried to organize them in some kind of logical fashion, uh, and hopefully you'll see that when we go through. But essentially, you know under slash boot um, are gonna be all the bootloader files. And you'll remember we talked about what the bootloader is last week, right? So this is essentially the component, it's a component of the operating system 
that's responsible for the initial uh, boot um, of the OS. So all of the files are located in the slash boot directory. And then you've got um, device files under slash dev. So uh, slash dev. Okay, so for example, these are um, virtual monitors, um, standard air, standard in and standard out. These are streams where all the uh, input, the output and the errors go. Uh, you can see some things looking like they belong to memory. Um, you know, so all the different uh, essentially devices, um, all the information about the devices are located under this dev directory. And obviously, unless you know what you're doing, um, you typically don't need to be here. But just to understand that even the devices are represented as part of the file system uh, in Linux. Okay. So that's dev. And then slash MNT are temporarily mounted file systems. So actually you'll see something here on this system. Okay, so I am running Windows subsystem for Linux. And so it mounts my C drive, my Windows C drive as an external um, storage device as C. So, you know, I could just uh, CD, MNT, C, and then you'll notice the standard Windows um, file structure here, right? So this is my C users directory. And then I could, you know, I could probably, I probably have my desktop here, you know, and so you could traverse that directory. But this is, if you're thinking about more in an academic setting or, in a company, if you're on an enterprise Linux system, this would be typically a storage, uh, a network storage device. And you would mount that storage device and then you would access it by slash MNT. And then there would be something else after MNT where you could use, which, which you would use to then access that externally mounted storage device. Uh, Slash proc is uh, information about the system. Okay, so again, you can see a lot of um, system related um, file looking things. Uh, again, unless you know exactly what you're doing here, uh, it's not any place that you wanna be messing around. Um, so those are kind of all system boot device related um, directories and then you get to um, kind of the applications so you have bin and s bin so slash bin would be the command binary so command binary might be like uh, some of the commands we've been doing up until now cat ls so let's go take a look All right um you see anything here that you recognize? So here's touch. Um, what else did we do? Uh, here's RMDIR. Okay, so you can see all of those. So a binary is essentially a program. Um, so we call them commands, they're executables. Um, so for those of you who are more familiar with computer science and have a computer science background, You'll know what an executable is if you don't. I mean, if, that, if that's not your background, then you know, really an executable is a program. It's the thing that the machines actually understand, the ones and zeros that the machine understands. And um, this is where they're all stored in, in bin, okay? And then if you go to S bin, those are uh, system binaries. So it's kind of at a different level, but the system is using them, not necessarily for commands. Okay, so this isn't, these aren't gonna be necessarily things that you always use, but the system is using them under the cover um, for various uh, functions. And then you have lib. Uh, lib contains all uh, libraries. So binaries are executables. Um, they're the programs. You can think of libraries kind of as executables, but they're the supporting executables. They're, you need those libraries, they're common. 
So you can have a common li uh, library that, that is used by multiple um, executables and they're all stored in this lib folder. And then anything that's stored um, that's not part of the system, you know, you install a package um, that's not part of the system that will be stored in opt. So let's see what I have here under opt, nothing. I haven't installed anything, um, but this is where if you still install, install a third party package, um, this is where it would be installed. And then uh, root is the home directory. Uh, so the root directory of the root user, and then the uh, all of the uh, home, sorry, all of the home directories are under home. So right now there's only one user, um, but if I created another user, it would uh, create another directory here. Okay. Uh, the the file uh, Etsy or etc or etc. Um, these are where you're going to find various configuration files. Um, so you can see if I go to uh, I recognize um, well actually it doesn't really matter I mean here's you know here's a config file here's a config file um, so this is where a lot of config files are stored traditionally this was a place where every it was kind of like the the dumping ground this is where everything else was which didn't have a, another place for it. That's why it's um, ETC. And so, um, but typically when you're looking for configuration files, this is where you're gonna find them. We talked about, uh, do I have HTTP? No, I don't have it installed here. But um, this is where you're gonna find all the configuration files when you're looking for them. Then you have var. Var is um, where all the variable data files are. That's essentially files that are gonna change um, during the life of the system, right? So what's one example of something that's gonna change all of the time? Uh, logs, and that's uh, a very common reason that you're gonna to go to var is that's where all your log files are. So you go to var log and, you know, here's all the different log files that different applications are creating. And then temp, uh, sorry, or slash TMP, that's where all the temporary files are going to be kept. Okay, so you'll see there are a few more, and we haven't gone into all of them, but generally, this is going to be the structure of um, your Linux environment. And it's good to know uh, where to go for what and where not and where to stay away from, right? You want to stay away from these unless you know what you're doing. Uh, slash MNT, um, typically, if there's an external disk attached, that's where it's going to be mounted and you're going to see it there. This is where your binaries are going to kept, be kept in the supporting libraries. Um, your home directories, your logs are going to be in slash var. All right. So just to give a sense of, of what all those directories are, and you'll see them um, in, in any Linux distribution. And then here, just to kind of point out, you know, here's another view of those same directories with a few extra ones shown, but you can see in the, the home directory, you have home um, and then for each uh, user, and then you know that user can set up their own uh, structure under here to no end, right? So there's, a, there's this hierarchical nature of the directories. And then the one directory that I wanna point out here on this page is the USR or user directory. This is where if you have multi-user applications. So sometimes you're gonna install an application um, just for yourself. In other cases, it's gonna be installed for all users or multiple users. And so this is where um, you can have a similar structure and where you can have the bin files and um, you know, similar structure to that and store all of the, uh, the files there for those multi-user uh, applications. So if we go here, let's see if there's anything here. I think there is. Yeah, so you can see there's, um, you know, you can see the uh, the binaries, uh, bin, sbin, um, lib. Okay, so uh, it's kind of a parallel folder structure for these multi-user applications. <clears throat> okay, file permissions. So this is very important because, um, you know, file security in Linux, 
and file security, uh, sorry, file security in any operating system, or for that matter, in any file system is critical, right? Um, users rely on having, um, on, on maintaining the integrity of files for a lot of reasons. So one is if I create an application, let's say I'm the developer of an application and I have a particular file uh, that needs to be uh, created a certain way and needs to have certain content, I don't want just anybody going in and modifying it. You know, it's going to ruin the whole application. The, syst the system's not going to work properly. Um, that's true of an application. It's even more true of system files, right? You don't want anybody going in and deleting them, modifying them, overriding them, whatever. Um, so, you know, that's one reason why it's important. And then the other reason, which is probably more obvious to everybody is just privacy of your files, right? You have your own files. You expect some level of, of privacy, especially if you're in a company and, um, you know, you have files that other people shouldn't be reading, but there's also files that certain certain people should be reading. So you have uh, individuals who can have access to files and have permissions across files. And then you have groups uh, who can have permissions across files. And so that's all true of any file system. And what we're gonna do is talk about how file permissions work uh, in Linux in particular. So when you look at file permissions um, in Linux, it's pretty simple. Um, especially when you compare it to, to Windows. Um, you know, so there's three layers of, of um, ownership or users. And then for each of those um, ownership or those memberships, there's a, a, a corresponding permission. So you can have the owner of the file or a user, and you can have a group. Um, associated with that file, and then you can have everyone else. So the owner of the file will have certain permissions, then the group associated with that file is gonna have um, certain permissions, and then everybody else who's not either here or here will have permissions. So what permissions can they have? Well, it can be read, write, or execute, and or execute. So a user can have read permissions and write and execute. And the group can have read, write, and execute. And then everybody else can have read, write, and execute. Um, and I say and, I'm trying to think of the right logical word if it's and or or. But it doesn't have to be all three. So in this case, uh, one one a user can have read, write, and execute, while a group might only have read permission, where everybody else might have no permissions. So it's not necessarily all of these have to be true. Um, it it's set um, based on um, which user, which group we're we're talking about here. Okay. Um, so this is a, a um, and we'll 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 do look at some examples of this. But here's kind of an, a, a a view of it. Here, uh, this is the owner. This is the group. Okay, so you can see there are for each file. So here's a file lesson.txt. You can see for each file, um, you have so the first digit here or the first placeholder here is just whether it's a directory or not. That has nothing to do with the permissions. It should, it's either going to be a D or it's going to be a dash. And then the next nine placeholders are going to be the permissions. So you're going to have the first three placeholders are for the owner, in this case, Raymond. And then the next three are going to be for the group. In this case, it's ADM. And then the last three are going to be for everybody else. So if you're not Raymond and you're not part of this admin group, then these are your permissions. So in this particular case, for this file called lesson.txt, Raymond has read permission, write permission, but not execute permission. And it doesn't have execute permission because this is not an executable anyway. So you don't even need it, but 
uh, executable meaning a binary or a program. But Raven can read that file and can write to the file. Uh, the admin or ADM group can read to the read the file, write to the file, and that's it. Everybody else, anybody else that logs in and tries to look at this file um, can read it, but can't write to it. All right, makes sense. Three digits or three placeholders, and each placeholder in the same order: read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, write, execute. First one is for the owner. Second one is for the group. Third one is for everybody else. This is the owner, and this is the group that corresponds to these permissions. Does that make sense? I'll take that as a yes. Yes. All right, good. Okay. Um, so let's dig into this um, just in a little bit more detail. So as I said, again, the first dash here tells you it's a file. If it was a directory, it would be like this, D. So D represents the directory, or it represents a directory, okay? Um, now these are your permissions. So in this case, this is the owner that has read and write permissions. Anybody in this group, has read permissions only, and everybody else has only read permissions. Okay. In this case, you can see um, this user has uh, read, write, execute. The group just has read and execute, no write, and everybody else has read and execute. Okay, and we can, we'll try some of these things and see what happens when we change uh, those permissions. So again, user, group, everybody else, read, write, execute. Um, all right, so that uh, hopefully makes it clear. Um, so let's go take a look at some of these things. So let's go back to our home directory. Okay, so, and, and the other thing is, uh, I mentioned this earlier, but just to, to highlight again that these dot files are all hidden and I'm only seeing them because I use the dash A. That's the other, the other thing to know. So they're hidden because, you know, you typically don't wanna be messing with them. And so you hide them, but you know, um, you can you can list them if you use the dash a. All right, so um, let me start with this file here. Okay, so you can see that the root user, this file here, okay, the root user has permission to read write and execute. So root is the owner of this file, okay? This group has read permissions only, and everyone else has no permissions. So, okay, so here's, here's who I am right now, which is this, and I'm part of this group, right? So that's who I am, but if I do my ID, you can see this is my group. So my user, this is my user, okay? But this, the user that owns this file is this. There's also a group with my name. That's the group that I'm a part of. Uh, and that's the group that has permissions to read. So if I try and read this file, and how do I read it? Somebody? Chat. Cat. Yeah, good. Cat dead.sh. So now I can read it. Okay. But let me try to, e to echo hello to 
dead.sh. Okay, permission denied. Why is it permission denied? Permission denied because I do not have permission to write to it. I only have permission to read from it. Okay, so um, I only have permission to read from it. Um, now, here's an example um, where So, ex so executable, I can execute it, um, means it's a program I can run. So if I, so again, let's use that same file. So you can see that my, in this group that I'm in, I can't, I don't have permissions to execute this. So if I try and execute it, by executing, I just have to, okay, permission denied. But if I sudo, have we talked about sudo? No. Okay. And then let me just say, I mean, I made myself the root user. Okay. As soon as I run it as the root user, I'm able to run it. So as myself, I was unable to run it. I was unable to execute it, but as root, I was able to execute it because root has execute privileges, but I do not have execute privileges. Okay, so let's try with a, let's try with a directory, okay? And try to see if there's a directory here. Okay, let me show you, go through one more slide and then I'll do this because I need to explain one more thing to you before I, oh, here, here's one. Okay, oh, but I have permissions there, sorry. Okay, let me go through one more, couple more slides and I'll show you the, what I wanna show you, the examples. Okay, so the question is, if per, certain files have certain permissions, then can I change those permissions? Well, generally, the answer is yes. There's a facility to change permissions, and it's called chmod, okay, for change mode. Um, and essentially, you're going to change the permissions on the file. And there's a few different ways to do it. So you can... Um, Well, we've seen this already, right? So you've got the read, write, execute, read, write, nothing. But these are the different symbols that are gonna show up here, okay? Um, and you could do this, right? So that's one way to do it. Read, write, execute, read, write, execute. So you essentially do um, chmod, Let's just do, just give full permissions to everybody on this one, okay? User equals read, write, execute. Uh, root equals read, write, execute. Other equals read, write, execute. And then new alternatives. Okay, so look at this file here before I do the directory again. Right, read, write, read, read. Now, where did it go? Which file is it? Yeah, change color because I gave it executable permissions, new alternatives.log. So now you can see everything is read, write, executable, read, write, executable, right? But it's not really an executable file. So I'm going to take away those permissions. So I can do it now chmod. Um, now, another way to do this is just do minus x for new alternatives.log. I'm just, so, so I don't have to specify the whole thing. I can just say take away the 
executable permissions. Now, if I do LL, you can see it's taken away the executable permissions for everybody, right? Or I could say, take away the write permissions. Uh, sorry. Oh, I can't take it away for everybody. Okay. Um, I want to show you how I add. So let's say here I can add it right here. So this list.txt. So I can add, if I wanted to add uh, ch mod, I want to add write permissions for list.txt. Now, if I look at it, list.txt. Oh, because I only got, so I would have to do for myself. Yeah, okay, I would, that's only doing it for myself. Um, so that's the first way to do it. So let me go back. This is the first way to do it. You specify user, group, and others, and you can specify read, write, executable for all three of them. The other way to do it is this way, right? You can take away or add based on that or, or based on what you want to do. Okay, that will, that you don't, so you don't have to remember everything that that's there already and retype it. You're just adding or, or subtracting. Okay, so those are two, two ways to do it, but the most common way to do it is like this. Okay, this is the, um, this is how you see it done most often. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, binary, but if you are, great. It'll be easier for you to understand. If not, doesn't matter. Um, you can understand it pretty quickly. So each of these digits corresponds to a number, okay? And it, it's, it, it corresponds to a number in binary. Um, these numbers increment because they're binary uh, bits, but it goes one, two, four. If you understand that, great. If you don't understand it, don't worry. Why? Just believe me, it is one, two, and four. One, two, four. One, two, four. Okay, one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four. That's all you have to remember. So, if you want read, write, execute, you've got four, a two, and a one. You just add them up. That's seven. If you want read and execute, it's just a four and the one, so you get a five. If it's just read, then it's the four only. Okay. What if I want to just execute? What is just execute? One. Correct, execute is one. What is uh, just right? Two. Two, okay. So you're just adding up these numbers depending on what you want. So now you can look at this and you can look at the numbers here. So if I do 777 for a particular file, doesn't matter what the file is, Let's just, let me, let me just make it on this file here, test.sh. Okay, so on this file here, test.sh. Oops, I'm missing one digit here. 777, seven, seven. that means it's going to do one, two, and four, seven. One, two, and four, seven. One, two, and four, seven. It means it's gonna make all of these uh, turn on or enabled. So it's going to be read, write, execute across the board. So now if I do LL, now you can see I've got read, write, execute across the board. Okay. So if, what if I just wanted to give myself read, write, execute? So I'm going to give myself read, write, execute. So what do I want for the first three here? One plus two plus four is seven. And then what do I want for the group? 
I don't want any permissions for the group. So what's that? Zero or zero. dash? Zero. No, not dash, zero. Zero. Okay, zero plus zero plus zero. And then I want zero for the everybody, for everybody else. Test.sh. So now it's just seven, zero, zero. If I wanted read, write, execute for myself, okay, CH mod, read, write, execute for myself. So read, write, execute for myself. And then I want only read for everyone else. So it's going to be four plus zero plus zero. That's four. And then the next one is going to be also just read, which is four plus zero plus zero. So I'm going to do 744 test.sh. Now you can see I've got seven, four, and four. Okay. So that's how most you'll see it done most often. But if that confuses you, don't worry about it. You can always do. Um, do it like this. Read, write, execute. Uh, group equals read, execute. Uh, read, execute. And others equals read and test.sh. Right. Read, write, execute. Read and execute. Just read. Okay. So we will, uh, I think I've got through most of it. Um, maybe we'll just come back and recap this. Uh, next week. There's just a couple of slides and an exercise here for us. We'll come back and complete it. Oh, not next week. We have a class two days from now. Uh, it'll be the third and final session of this boot camp where we'll do this and, um, you know, get into a few more things uh, with with um, Linux, but we'll finish this portion of it when we come back on uh, on Thursday. Today is Tuesday, so it's on Thursday. So we'll come back Thursday and uh, finish this off. Any last minute burning questions? Okay, well, thank you very much for joining and I hope to see you on Thursday evening. Bye-bye.